I'm an English education major from San Francisco State University. Um, thank you so much for having me here today. It's been so amazing hearing the work you guys have been doing. Um, especially shout out to the encampments that are happening in Berkeley right now. As the state was part of the Desa Solidarity Encampment movement last spring, so I can say as someone who spent every night there, it's not easy being at an encampment and I definitely know that. Um, I'm very proud to say that at SFSU, our Gaza Solidarity and Hitman's movement was successful and we divested from companies that were invested in weapons manufacturing for the genocide in Palestine. <laughs> but obviously that was not easy. Throughout that whole movement, we were looking at our screens and seeing like bloody heads of students and like intense repression from all across the nation while we were moving towards like trying to organize for a free Palestine. Last semester here in this city at University of San Francisco, 26 students were suspended trying to fight for a free Palestine. And in UCSF, right, our neighbors right next door, people got fired trying to talk about Palestine. We're told repeatedly that they couldn't wear pro-Palestine bins. Coming out of this encampment, the CSU system, which SFSU was a part of, released this huge repression policy called Time, Place, and Manner, explicitly banning encampments, first of all, so we can all guess what this was a response to, um, but also adding in all of these insane laws telling us that 12 to 2 is our free speech time and banning jogging and giving us a curfew of 10 p.m., even though some students' schools' classes end at 10 p.m., banning masks, which includes like face coverings of all kinds, including the cops which is absolutely insane. And it's really coming to the forefront that the more that we make Palestine a visible issue, the more that this genocide is coming to the visible because we're noticing that this US administration and the schools are funding genocide, while at the same time we're also seeing visibly unhoused people on the streets because they won't fund the basic needs of our people. It's insane. We're spending about $600 million in the California government going towards this genocide. The UC system spent $29 million on repression alone. And the CSU system right now, maybe we want SFSU divestment, but the CSU-wide system is invested $2.3 billion in companies that are making weapons for the genocide. Billion, billion while I'm watching my classmates like sleep in their cars because they can't afford housing. Billion while they implemented a 34% tuition raise in the CSU system. Time and time again, like the US administration and schools are telling us that we don't have money when it comes to the basic needs. We don't have money when it comes to affordable housing. We don't have money when it comes towards all of the different mental health services that people need on our schools and in our communities, but when it comes to a genocide, when it comes to sending bombs to children, right. sending bombs to hospitals, sending bombs to people in Palestine, then suddenly we have the money. Right. What gives? And time and time again, when these issues become more and more visible, whether it's through our student activism of making it visible, or rather through it, the sheer contradictions just showing themselves as more and more people can't afford housing and more and more people end up on the streets, what do they do? Do they do it? Do they try to solve these issues by trying to get to the root of the problem, by trying to analyze what's wrong with our society? Do they do that? 